Hey everybody, it's Saturday night and we're going to do an impromptu round the world update here. I uh, don't have much going on here in my 29 miscellaneous tank. In fact, I can't really think of anything I've got going on in this tank. Uh, a couple of times over the last week I've thrown some snails in here, which is not typical. But my snail tank is just getting overrun with the ram's horn snails. And since loaches are specialty snail eaters and I do have a bunch of loaches in this tank it's a way for me to get rid of some snails and it's a way to give the loaches a little meaty uh, treat so I've done that my clown plucko is still in here in fact we can actually see him right now you see his little head sticking out from between those two pieces of wood right there hopefully we can kind of see that Anyway, trust me, that's him. You can see those little sort of tan colored lines. That's the uh, pectoral fin. And then the sort of dark rounded part is its head facing us. So that is the little clown pleco. It's still alive and well. Once I got the glass wiped down, it's remained clean. It hasn't gotten dirty again since I wiped it down. And then everything else in the tank is actually getting cleaner since I put the clown pleco in there. That was the whole point. The rubber lip I had in there for about five years died. And we were getting some really gunky, overgrown, you know, just growth in the tank. It just builds up over time. If you don't have something like a pleco or a rubber lip or something like that in there, uh, keeping the tank clean, it can get pretty dirty over time. So it's definitely in there and doing its thing and keeping its, uh, you know, earning its keep, I should say. So moving on to the 55 gallon Garami tank. Did a great big water change on this one two days ago, maybe three days ago now. Like a big water change, probably 70%, 60% of the water out of the tank at least. So I removed a lot of the tannins and got it really lightened up that way. I also removed a lot of the vegetation, um, not you know to remove, but just simply to trim it up. My red tiger lotus here had several large leaves, at least you know this size, up near the surface, blocking the light into the tank. And then I had three small leaves that had actually made it to the surface that were on the surface, blocking light. I had this huge wad of fern right there and I removed that, cut one little piece off and then put it back. Now if you can see these two little pieces sticking out of the wood down there on the bottom, they stayed behind. When I pulled the big chunk off the top it didn't really feel like it was attached. It was just sort of wedged on there, you know, kind of jammed into a crack in the wood the way I have that little rhizome right there. That's not actually growing in there, that's just kind of wedged on there. Those two little ones down there are growing out of the wood. The roots have thoroughly grown into it now. It's been there long enough. So honestly, I could take this little piece here all right off the top and leave that one to it. And that will actually grow from the wood now that those roots are down into the wood. And, and you know, it's taking its nutrients directly out of the wood now. So I might do that. I might remove that. Keep in mind, I do have plenty of java fern for sale right now. I removed a ton of java fern from the next tank we're going to be looking at. And then, of course, I've always got water sprite. And I removed a ton of the water sprite out of this tank when I was doing that water change as well. Fish-wise, nothing else is really happening in this tank. My little chocolate garami over here still looks good. Still doing well. Still eating. wouldn't exactly call it fat but it doesn't look skinny it doesn't look like it's not getting enough food or anything so I'm not too worried about it and that is about all I can think of with this tank we do still have my whiptail catfish you can see hanging off of the woodwork right there and I actually just got a little glimpse if you look right past the rock right where that loach just came out you can see kind of sticking out from underneath that wood there's a little tip of a fin that has a reddish color to it uh, that is my red tail loach so the red tail loach is still in there and still living underneath of this piece of wood like it has for uh, the vast majority of its life so everything still looks good in this tank nothing really uh, unpleasant to report 
So moving on to my T-bar tank. We kind of have to stand close to this because I've got some stuff on the floor at the moment. Did another really big water change on this one too. Again, probably 70% of the water out of the tank. Really, really brightened it up. Lightened it up. During the water change, I found a dead hatchet fish. It had jumped out through a little gap in the back and got stuck between the light and the hood and basically dried out. I also found a little female guppy up there that the same thing had happened to. Um, this tank, we got in there and we did a lot of plant removal. I know that looks a little rough and disastrous right now, but that will fill back in and look just fine in no time flat. I might get in here and trim back this Anubius, this rhizome in here. Uh, if you can see this main rhizome, I could probably get in here and cut it off like that. And then we'd still have this whole mass down here. And then, you know, I'd have that whole piece to either put up for sale or put in one of my other tanks or something. If you see this one right here, that is actually a little flower head. This one to the left is new growth. And then we've got some new growth coming up down there. Growing really vigorously. This one, we've got a rhizome that's coming up back here. I could cut that whole rhizome off. That would be a separate plant altogether. And then this main chunk of rhizome coming up through here. Again, I could get down here and cut that off, which I probably will be doing at some point. I kind of like them big and bushy, but we'll see. They're getting a little bit out of control. And you can see on this one, I've got the two prominent flower heads sticking out right there. And then down here, I've got some more uh, flower heads and there's some new growth. I salvaged the Aponagetan, which is this down here. That was floating. The T-bar likes to dig, and all this was dug up, so that Aponagetan was floating. I now have it tucked down sort of under this rock um, it, where the bulb is. It's not being squished by the rock, but it is under there. And I really don't think that the T-bar, even if it moves all of that substrate out of the way, will uproot that Aponagetan. So as long as it has time to really root in and get some roots down into the substrate then it'll be uh, safe from the t-bar which is this one right here so moving on to my black ghost knife fish tank the only thing i've really got to talk about in this tank is if you see these little specks everywhere and I mean everywhere, they're just, they dot the tank if you see them all over the place. It's this huge infestation of snails that I've got, but they're not undesirable snails. They're not pest snails. My um, blue mystery snails in here have been breeding like crazy. And I've got little baby snails all over the place. So I've already got one person that has asked about them. I do have them for sale. I've never shipped snails before. I ship plants all the time, as I've said. Um, I only tried shipping fish once, and they did not survive. I don't know if the weather was too hot for them or what. But with the snails, that's my same concern. With it being summertime, I'm not really sure how to go about doing that. Um... So if you're interested in them, contact me. We'll make some kind of arrangements. We'll see what we can do. I'll probably ship them the same way I ship plants. And then if they don't make it alive, you know, you can contact me and we can either try again or whatever. You know, we'll, we'll go from there. But I think that's what my, um, you know, I don't think I'm going to have to, like, pack them in any kind of insulation. I, I think they're going to be okay if I, you know, express mail them over a two-day period. I don't think they'll cook too badly in a bag of water. So anyway, lots and lots and lots of blue mystery snails. So look down below. You'll see my email address. You can contact me. We'll talk about it. Other than that, I don't have anything else that I can think of uh, going on in this tank. <coughs> Excuse me. Moving on to my native tank. <coughs> Excuse me. i got a frog in my throat. Moving on to my native tank, I put a few more crayfish in here, I don't know, about a week ago, and now that I'm looking down in that little cave, there might be a crayfish down in there. There always used to be when I had a lot of crayfish in this tank, that was a 
spot that somebody was always living in. There goes my Chinese algae eater going after my um, Pleco again. One of these days, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to get that Chinese algae eater out of the tank. He really is an unpleasant fish and he harasses my Pleco all the time. So I've just sort of got that on film a couple times this week and, you know, positively identified that's the source of stress in the tank. I think once I get that Chinese algae eater out of here, <coughs> excuse me, I think once I get that Chinese algae eater out of here, uh, the tank will calm down a lot. The Pleco mainly will be better off because it's just getting chewed on and beat up and chased around and stressed constantly. So anyway, the um, crayfish I put in here, there's one back there. If you look back there, you can see a little bit of movement. That is a crayfish. And I've got two or three of them in here now that have been out and about on a fairly regular basis. I need to get out and get two or three more good sized ones to put in here. And that, I think, will give us enough crayfish in here that they'll be out on a regular basis. And we'll get to see them sort of milling about the tank. Right now, they do come out when I feed. And I didn't even think about it. I probably should have fed the tanks before I came around shooting this video. Again, this was very impromptu. You can kind of see the one back there if that chub would get his face out of the way. You can see one crawling around back there. So no new fish, but I do have some new crayfish, and we have documented some, you know, nasty aggression from the Chinese algae eater. Big surprise there. Um, other than that, I really can't think of a whole lot I've got going on with this tank either, so we're going to move right along. I feel like we're already getting long-winded, and we got a ways to go yet. My snail tank, if you want to just have a quick glance in there. You can see what I mean about my snails overrunning the place. Usually on the back of that piece of rock right there is just a huge mass of them. But it looks like the big mass is all huddled up in the corner now. And then of course all those little white specks and everything you see all over the glass in there. That's all snail eggs. So moving on to my purple spotted gudgeon tank. For one thing, uh, the lights on this tank are inadequate. I've got a little DIY LED panel I made and put on there. And it's actually not too bad, but the combination of that and then the dense vegetation I've got in here just makes it really dimly lit. You can hardly even see the fish in here. And really, this is the only fish that anybody ever sees. I do have a rubber lip pleco in there. We see that a glimpse here and there. It makes an appearance, but it basically hides under the rocks most of the time. And then I've still got that little South American bumblebee catfish that hides down under the roots and everything in this corner. And that's it. That's all we ever really get to see. Mostly a silhouette. The camera doesn't even know what to focus on. We get a silhouette of a fish in the tank and that's about it so i think i'm going to start by removing a lot of that java fern and then we'll see how much that opens the tank up and lightens it up and maybe we'll go from there the the uh, diy leds might be adequate they might be enough to keep it um lit if i remove a lot of that java fern i don't know we'll have to wait and see but again it's just really really poorly lit that's a really gorgeous fish with a lot of really interesting color. It's subtle color, and the camera has a hard time picking it up, but I see it, you know, but I need the light on it to see it, and in these circumstances, you just don't get that. Now, when I do have my LED grow light on over my garden tank in the middle of the room, that actually puts some good light on this tank, and I can see the fish a lot better, so... You know, again, it's not one of those pressing issues just because I do get to see the fish. So, moving on to my 125, which likewise will have to stand sort of here and kind of look at as we go along. This tank doesn't have anything specifically going on other than being in need of a water change. I think I'm going to remove this big mass of water sprite down at this end of the tank too and just brighten this end of the tank up. It's just so dimly lit. If you will try to walk over here a little bit. 
if you look at the whole length of the tank, it's dark at both ends. And that's mostly just because of that floating water sprite really just blots out the light. I've actually got bright floodlights directly over both ends of the tank. And if all of that water sprite wasn't there, you can see there's some pretty intense light shining down. And I like it at this end. Hang on a minute here. It's a big mass of the stuff. But if we pull it off to the side a little bit and move it over there, I mean, you can see how much that opens the tank up and brightens the tank up. So the same thing holds true down on this end. If we, hang on once again here, if we take this and just shove everything down and get it out from underneath of that light right there, it really makes a huge difference. So I don't know if maybe I'm going to try to get these roots to sort of anchor over here somewhere. Maybe we'll just sort of darken the whole central, central area of the tank um, and leave the, the end brightly lit. I don't know. I do have more of this upon a Geaton, so that's going to get cut out of there pretty soon. So once again, if you're interested in the uh, aquatic plants, we can add a upon a Geaton to that list. I do have some of that if you're interested in purchasing it. Again, see my email in the description below. Otherwise, I can't really think of much going on in here. I'm just, again, in need of a water change. You can see the water itself is tannin stained. And then, of course, we've got to remove a lot of the plants and everything. And that will really brighten this tank up quite a bit. So we'll get some video on that when we get around to doing that. My little 20-gallon angelfish tank in here. Nothing specifically going on in it. But I was noticing the other day how gorgeous these angelfish are have turned out it's going to be hard to see them on video because they're going to be right up against the glass trying to you know waiting for dinner because i haven't fed anybody yet tonight but this one in particular when it swims under the light it has so much blue in its dorsal fin it is just a stunning angelfish i knew it was going to be pretty when i got it young but it really has impressed me as it's gotten older I actually thought that this one in the back, the marbled one or calico or whatever color you'd call that, I actually thought that was going to be the looker. And it is, you know, that's definitely a gorgeous angelfish. But this one, if it will ever cooperate a little bit and swim out into the light, that one is just amazing. Here, let me open the lid and see if we can get them to move. There we go. This one, I just think, is absolutely beautiful. So, really happy with the way they turned out. And again, it's not going to swim towards the back of the tank and get underneath of that light. But trust me, there's a lot of blue in the dorsal fin on this one. So, moving on down here to my quarantine tank. One of my quarantine tanks. Uh, I've got a lot of live bearers that I got from a viewer. They needed to uh, find a good home for the fish, and I don't really know where they're going to go yet. But they've got a good home. They're here in my quarantine tank, and they're doing well. Uh, I did lose one guppy uh, shortly after I got them. But otherwise, everybody that arrived alive has remained alive. I did get a few of them that didn't survive the trip. But out of the ones that did make it, all I've lost so far was that one guppy, and that died within a couple of days of getting them. Everybody else is doing well so far. Uh, my quarantine tank that I have in my other room has, I want to say, five rainbow fish in it that I originally thought, uh, same batch of fish, the same came from the same, uh, same viewer, and all of them came together. I got the rainbow fish, and then I got all these live bearers. And I was thinking about putting the rainbow fish in this tank since there's already rainbow fish in it. But first of all, I would have to let them fully grow out so that my tenopoma there doesn't eat them. And I would also have a lot of mismatched rainbow fish in this tank and whatnot. So I don't know where they're going to go just yet, but I don't think I'm going to put them in this tank. I think we're going to put those rainbow fish somewhere else. Anyway, moving on. Got one more tank to look at before we get to the garden tank, and then we'll be done. So this is my 40 breeder brackish puffer tank. 
or my brackish tank really it just happens to have a puffer in it and that of course is why I set the brackish tank up and everything is because I wanted figure eight puffer after I saw them I fell in love with them puffers are amazing little fish and I got my little butter bean here probably at least five years ago now I guess he's about five and believe it or not he has not had his dinner yet tonight he's that fat already um, I might have thrown some snails in there from one of my other tanks earlier today I don't know I don't keep track of that all the time you can see the snail graveyard here in the center of the tank but this is another tank that has that DIY lighting on it that is not very bright I'm not really happy with it so we'll see what happens with that I will say since I've gone to this really low lighting I have not had a lot of the cyanobacteria growing back I only got that when I had a much more brightly lit tank than this again it was a very low quality LED I am planning on shooting a video here in the fairly near future about LEDs and how they make light and the difference between good LEDs versus cheap LEDs and LED arrays versus single diodes and so on and so forth we'll have a, a big discussion about LEDs that's, that's uh, something that's always fascinated me as a way of making light uh, I think just LEDs is like the most amazing way of making light humans have ever come up with so far so we'll talk more about that um, otherwise, not a lot going on. I can't really think of anything to talk about with my brackish tank here. Uh, I've seen a few of the shrimp in there, so I know I've at least still got two or three shrimp living in there. And then, of course, all my little gobies you can see darting and dashing around. I have had people in the past mistake them for being little baby puffers, but they are not baby puffers. They are little bumblebee gobies. They're completely different fish. So that's it for the peripheral fish tanks we've gone all the way around the world i guess now we're going to come here to the center of the world turn the big boy light on and we can look at my garden tank i still haven't done anything since the last video i shot of this which was last night i accidentally said it was a saturday night when it was actually a friday night but I didn't do anything except feed the tanks. I didn't get in and uh, do anything with any of the actual water changes I had talked about. But I do need to do some water changes. This one is my red clawed crab tank. And as far as I know, I've still got one red clawed crab in there. I haven't seen it in a while, but I did see it. And I haven't smelled any dead crab or found any dead crabs on the floor or anything. So as far as I know, I've still got at least one little red claw crab in there. And then, of course, what I've really got in there is a ton of little endlers and live bears. And they make babies all the time. And I've got so many little baby fish swimming around in this tank. I really need to get in there and do something about that. But that's a brackish water tank. And it's... You know, I got to make up a batch of brackish water before I do it. So that's something uh, altogether different than a simple water change that I would have to do with this tank, for example. And this, of course, is just a freshwater tank and has some native fish that I caught down at the stream. Uh, it does have a couple little baby sunfish in it. And then the rest are little minnows. And I don't really honestly even know what kind of minnows they are. Uh, they're not going to get a chance to grow out too much in this tank before it gets broken down and revamped into something else the sunfish of course will have to come out of there as they get a little bit larger the other thing I've got going on uh, with this tank is I need to remove this here all my plants are doing really well in fact I m forgot to mention um, this keeps falling down into the water and that's why we've got all these roots growing off of it because it's been falling into the tank and that's been you know down here in the water and I wanted to go across the glass so I actually made this little clip out of a twisty tie and I'm able to just sort of hold that in there without it really being obvious and now because these roots were developing on this end it's used to having water pumped this way into the main body of the plant and now that I've pulled the roots out of the water, it has to rely on the water coming from this end and being pumped this way through the plant. So it's starting to dry out. The roots are going to die. It's probably going to look a little bit rough, but it's creeping Jenny and that stuff's pretty durable. So it should come back pretty nicely. Um, my 
Um, dead nettles are just growing out of control. They're getting a lot of light for what dead nettles are used to. This creeping jenny is growing out of control. Everything's doing really well plant-wise except for my stone crop. All this sort of gray nastiness that's all... I'm assuming that's powdery mildew. It's some kind of moldy, mildewy something or other. This should be a bright yellowish green. Um you know more akin to this color or you know this color or this color that whitish look you're seeing that's whitish because it's covered in mildew so not sure why that's happening you would think under the strong light like this that would prevent mildew from growing however i honestly don't know that just because it's called powdery mildew it might be some kind of disease that grows on a plant that's not actually mildew it just looks that way and maybe it needs a lot of sunlight i don't know i've just always assumed that powdery mildew was in fact mildew and that you got it on plants that got too much moisture and not enough light in the same way you might get mildew growing on the walls of your basement or some damp you know dimly lit area so anyway i don't know maybe i'll look into that now that i've thought about it for two seconds uh either way this whole thing has got to go it's just one tray by itself just a little plastic tray meant for keeping pens and pencils or utensils or whatever in and i just have it sitting on top of my whisper 60 filter there so fantastic filter love these whisper 60s i'll go ahead and put a link down below to that too if you're interested uh, in purchasing one of them cheap they're really low budget and they just run forever i just i love my whisper filters so there you go everybody there's a trip all the way around the world we're back to where we started and in fact this is a whisper 60 that i've been using for about five and a half years now and it still sits there and hums away without ever making a sound i love my little tetra whisper filters great value for their dollar so again i'll put a link down below for them anyway thanks for watching make sure you're subscribed you don't want to miss anything i got coming up don't forget this one here is my 29 gallon miscellaneous tank where we always start hope you enjoyed and i'll see you real soon in the next one